Okay. Um, so, once again, everyone was already supposed to have this done, but uh, I realized after I was looking at it that that might have been a little optimistic on my part, this page. Um, all the textbook stuff shouldn't have been a problem, but this page actually had some tricky questions on it that I probably shouldn't have asked you to do because there are some tricky ones on there. So we should probably go through it right now. After we're done going through it, I'm going to shut up because it is Halloween and you don't need a lecture. Um, I'm going to uh, assign you some work. It's already in your book. Um, and then uh, we'll go over it. Uh, I'm actually going to allow you to have until Thursday because I assume that a great many of you have plans tonight. You're getting too old to trick or treat, but you might have kid sisters, kid brothers, cousins, nieces, nephews, or some crap like that. You might have to take them around. Um, if you do have said little kid siblings and you're stuck out trick-or-treating with them and such, obviously you're not going to be doing math. I mean, you guys don't do math most of the nights that it's a regular night, let alone Halloween. So if you have any excuse, like your great grandmother's second cousin's goldfish dying which is the usual excuses i get then uh, you're not going to do any homework tonight either so i'm going to give you until thursday because that is something for marks um and we'll come to that then so if you could be on page 109 please like i said uh some of this stuff is pretty easy some of it you actually uh it, it was my fault. I kind of forgot how hard some of these questions were. So we'll go over them now. And then, I, like I say, I will shut up and allow you to uh, carry on. I question the wisdom of scheduling a school tour on Halloween. But, okay. I don't make those decisions. All right, so... Looking at number seven over here, what is it about number seven that looks like it's something that should bother you? Negative exponents, and what else? The decimal base, right? But if you look at it, of course you see that those are the same bases, aren't they? And if those bases were x, we would know what to do with it, right? So we don't let the looks fool us. What do I do when I'm going over brackets? Multiply. What is negative 3 times negative 5? Positive 15. So those negative exponents that bothered Carla and taken care of anyway, right? Over 1.5 to the fifth. What do I do there? Subtract. So it's 1.5 to the tenth. And then we're done. You could go a little further. You could go as far as say that's three halves to the 10th, which would be three to the 10th over two to the 10th if you really want to go crazy. But you get to there, I'm pretty happy. What about this one? What's freaky over here? The one third is an exponent, yeah? But if that was a two, would we know what to do with it? What would we do with it? It would go to everything. So just because it's one-third, do you think that changes? No. Eight to the one-third. A, what is three times one-third? This, uh, my other class had a lot of trouble with this question, like a lot of trouble. So let's think before we blurt out an answer. Daniel? It is one. Excellently done. Three times one-third is, of course, one, which we would never write. And what is six times one-third? Two, excellent, good, that makes me happy. Now I don't have to cry myself to sleep tonight. Two, now, something there bothers you, a one-third exponent, but yesterday we talked about what that meant. That's the same as saying the cubed root of eight to the first power, isn't it? Now what is the cubed root of eight? Two, so this is two AB squared, and this thing that is really ugly is actually really simple because it just follows the same rules that everything follows. 
because it's math class. And once you learn it once, it's there forever because they're rules. What about nine? Nine's freaky again, yeah? Until you notice, hey, wait a minute, numbers go with numbers, bases go with bases. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. What should I do with those numbers? So what is it? Two. What do I do with the A's? Subtract them. Now look at it carefully before you write down an answer. What is being subtracted there? Because this is the type of mistake that costs all of you half your marks on the upcoming test because you refuse to actually write stuff down. What is the answer to A of negative two minus two? It is negative four. If you are bad at subtracting and adding negative numbers, you should use your calculator. So that is A to the negative four indeed. And then this question also caused great trouble. What is two thirds take away one third? One third. That is not a complicated question. Yet again, I used up a whole roll of paper towel drying my tears yesterday waiting for 30 kids in the 10th grade to be able to answer that question. What there do you not like? don't like that negative exponent. What is that negative exponent attached to? Just A. What moves? Just A. Now, there is one more thing you can do here right there, depending on what you are asked. That is exponential form. Is that okay? Of course it is. But what if I ask for radical form? What do I do with that highlighted one? We learned it just yesterday. You hadn't practiced it very much because it was homework. So what do I do with that? It's already even been done on this page. Pardon me? It's the cube root of B, isn't it? So I could also rewrite this as two cube root b over a to the fourth. Both of them are acceptable. The only time you would ever get in any trouble for not being able to do both of them is if I were to specifically ask for radical form. Everybody understand? And I would only do that once to prove to me that you actually know what this means. Cool? Okay. Now, 10 has absolutely everything from the whole unit going on in there, all right? Technically, I could make number 10 your entire test on this whole unit because it has everything in it. But that would be stupid because if you got it wrong, I'd have to fail you for the unit, wouldn't I? And I would never do that because that's stupid. But you, looking at that, you should be able to see that it's got absolutely everything, doesn't it? It's got negative exponents, it's got rational exponents, it's got coefficients, it's got more than one base, and it's got brackets. So looking at that for a moment, where would you start? Don't blurt something out. Just think for a second about something you could do, because right now, that's a little bit scary looking. What can you do to make it tidier? because you've got lots of options and there's no right or wrong way to do it. So I would like somebody to say what they would do to start off with that. Anybody looking for a something, not getting it. You'd exponent everybody? That's cool. Okay, so 100 would get a half, yeah? What A would get a half over 25 would get a half. Now what would happen with A to the fifth?
Um, back to what we were speaking of. What would happen to that A? You would multiply it by a half. So, Carlin, what is 5 times 1 half? 2.5 or better, 5 halves. And what would B become? This is another question that made me cry. I used up a lot of tissues yesterday. What do I do with 1 half and 1 half? Multiply them like you do every time. What is one half times one half? Daniel, I know you know, so I'm not going to ask you. I actually want to ask somebody else because of the answers I got yesterday. Can somebody tell me what is one half times one half? Emma? Yeah, but we wouldn't use decimals because we don't need our calculators here because they will mess us up. So what is it really? One quarter. one quarter. Yesterday I was answered one half times one half is one about a thousand times. So I'm a little nervous now. What kind of one quarter? Negative, Negative one quarter. Excellent. Now, that is an okay first step. It's not the first step I would have made, but since we've made that first step with Jordan, we gotta continue with that, don't we? What is anything to the one half? It's a square root, isn't it? So what's the square root of 100? 10, excellent. What's the square root of 25? Five, excellent. What do I do with one half and five halves? Subtract. Now, again, this is getting complicated. What is one half take away five halves? Four halves, which is four over two, which is two. So I'm going to have A to the negative two. Right? Where does that A to the negative two go? It's starting out up here, so what do I need to do with it? You need to reciprocate it to bring it down to the denominator. And what do I do with B? Does it get any adjustment? Not in adding or subtracting because there's no other Bs, but it's negative, so where does it have to be placed? In the numerator, it's got to reciprocate. Is that an okay answer right now? It's okay, but you're not done. What more would you do there? You would do 10 divided by five, which is what? Two B to the one quarter over A squared. Now is it okay? Yes. What if I ask for radical form? Can you do one more thing there? It looks just like nine. Two, fourth root of B over A squared. And both of those are good. Yeah? Yeah. Now, let's look at 11 and 12. A lot of you are going to do these questions poorly. What you're going to do is you're going to take 2 and you're going to put it in for all these x's. And then you're going to get out your calculator. And you're going to punch it in wrong. Because you're not going to do the smarter thing first. What is the instruction I give on almost every question? Starts with an S and ends with a Y. Simplify. What word does simplify come from? Simple. So why would you give yourself all these crazy fractions and negative exponents and all that and try to punch all that into your calculator at once if you could make it simple, right? 
if this part wasn't there, what would you do with 11? You'd combine the X and you combine the Y's, right? So what should you do now? Combine the X's and combine the Y's before you even touch anything else. So what am I going to do with those X's? You're going to add them. What is three halves plus one half? Four halves, which is two. So I have X squared. And then what is do I do with the Y's? Add them. What's 2 plus negative 1? One. 1. So it's just Y, isn't it? Okay. So now what's X? Negative 2 squared, which is what? This is tricky. This is what? That's negative 4, isn't it? Right? Just wait. What's that one? Positive. That one's positive. Now, here's where you have to really be thinking. Which of these, A or B, is that? B. Now, I'm just going to keep sitting here like this. Are you going to change your mind back? You're sure. You really want to double down on it being B. Yeah? Now you've just said it's A again. Oh, you think so. Okay, I thought you said it's A, but you, you think so. So, you're gambling. What is it? Let me ask you this. What is this expression saying? Yeah, where the, where the red circle is. That says take X and square it, right? Okay. What is x according to the question? So I must be taking negative 2 and squaring it. So you were right. Good. So that is positive 4. What's y? 3. What's 4 times 3? 12. Done. This one's super tricky. Why? It's a big mess, isn't it? Where do I start simplifying? Okay, where can I do some like term combining? I see you're plugging in X's, right? Did we plug in X's first here or did we simplify? All those are X's, aren't they? So we could simplify it down to 1x, can't we? So let's do it. Where should I start? There's an exponent. There's a set of exponents. And there's a set of exponents. Where should I start? That 4, this 3, 4 on the left, or this 3, 4 on the right? The ones in the middle? That makes sense because this third this 3 is approaching everything, isn't it? So let's have a look at that. I'm going to have x to the 4th, and I have negative x to the what? Twelve, right? Everyone agrees? And all of that is to the 3, right? Can I do something here? Are those the same base? They are, aren't they? Right? Because that 12 is only attached to the x, not attached to the negative, is it? So what can I do with those exponents? To what? What do I do with exponents in this scenario? What are the bases doing? He waited patiently.
It's the negative that's scaring you, yes? Because you don't know what to say. But again, think of math. What would I do if it was that? Add them. Does this look different? It looks different. Is it? How many times do I have to say? Do looks matter? So here you would add. So what are you doing here? So what is it? 16. Now what's my base? It's a trick question. What is my base? Not yet. Do not say two. What is my base? X. What's out in front of it all? Negative. Now I put the negative. Whew. Makes a spider. X, negative. And all of that is cubed, yes? Okay, so what happens there? Multiply. So what happens there? Times three. Few of you know your 16 times table. It's x to the 48th. But what do I need out front? Still need a negative, right? Now here, it also has gotten tricky because now is that part of this space? Is that negative part of this cubing? 50-50, guys. I'll ask again. It's this situation here. Is it? It's in the bracket. So do I need brackets here? Yes, because that is part of it. Now, is that an even number? So this should come out positive, right? No matter what? This is saying I take negative x and I put it to the 48th power, right? So it would be negative. Negative. Now what's x? Look, x is negative 2. All to the 48th power, yes? What is negative, negative 2? Positive 2 to the 48th power. And you can, can you do that in your head? No, that's going to be a gigantic number. Fits on your calculator, but it's pretty big. So whatever you get, you get. It's... It's uh, two... It's that with two more zeros, but my numbers are stuck. It's uh, 700,000 million billion trillion. It's 281 trillion, 474 billion, 976 million, 700,000. A little tough to get to in your head, right? Two times two is four times two is eight, times two is 16, times two is... All right. I'm gonna shut up. Oh no, well, yeah, I can shut up. You guys can do those too. Um, on page, once again, I recommend, listen up, please. I cannot stress this enough. Yes. I cannot stress this enough. You want to look at the photocopied textbook pages in this section. You want to do that if you want to succeed in this unit. 
because if you haven't yet noticed, this unit is tricky. It's not that difficult because it's only add or subtract or multiply, but it's tricky. So you need practice. But if you're not going to do that, it hurts no one but you. So, whatever. But on Thursday, I will be marking 114, 115, and 116, and 117. That is due Thursday. Here's what's about to happen. I'm about to say go, and 90% of you are going to go straight to page 114 because that's for marks. And then you're going to immediately start asking me questions. How do I do this? In which case, I will respond, I don't know. How? Because it's a review. And what does review mean? Go back and look and find out how to do it. By the time you get a review, should you know how to do it? And if it's for marks, what was that? Oh. Maybe you could have said something. What do you... I can't eat gluten. I lucked out. I got a Snickers and M&M's, neither of which have them. Although Smarties do, surprisingly. Apparently you need wheat to make Smarties. Um, anyway. Sure. Did anyone order some food? No. No. Okay, good line. I understand. I wasn't going to actually let you. Anyway. It's a review. And it's for marks. Who needs marks in Math 10? Me? Or you? You. So don't bother asking. Okay? Go.